I'll soon forget it. So far between the lines, I'ma write a new set, a new beginning. Reflecting on the times that were that hard. I've fallen down many times, but I got mad hard. Uh. All right, YouTube, we're back. Mexican Lee's Therapy Garage. Uh, we're gonna do a little something different today um, on this beautiful weekend. One day off, I get. Uh, I'm having some uh, a check engine light that popped up on my 2020 Silverado um, Trail Boss Custom, um, cheaper version. It is calling for a code P0449, which has something to do with the uh, EVAP solenoid vent valve I believe is what it's called I don't think I have the paper here in the shop with me uh, let me double check as a matter of fact I do so what we have is P0449 like I said it is the evaporative emission system vent control electric circuit was intermittent for a predetermined period of time so what they say the most likely solution is to replace the evaporative emissions evap vent control valve so I did some digging and I don't like replacing just one part so the only thing I didn't buy was the actual um, canister the evap canister the big uh, on a box canister box that goes underneath the truck I didn't get that so that'll be my last resort but let me switch this camera around right this is what I ended up getting this is the uh, the purge valve which is GM part number uh, one two six three zero two eight two and then we also got the actual what this called for the vent control valve and that part number is 84613138 so both of them are genuine GM parts got these off of Rock Auto had to wait a couple days for them to uh, get here but I also went to the dealership and bought this which is the fuel pump control module I've seen guys say that they've changed this part out They've changed this part out and the check engine light was still coming on so they ended up changing the uh, the uh, module, control module and that took away the problem. So I said, what the hell, let's get all three pieces and see if we can make this happen. Um, 2020 Silverado man shouldn't have these issues already, I don't think. I don't take it four wheeling, it don't go in the mud. If anything, it sees rainy days, which we get a lot of, the, I mean, not a lot here in Texas, but they get pretty, uh, when they get here, they get here. I mean, they dump a lot of water on us. We get a lot of floods. So, but my truck hasn't been under no water either. So I'm not sure what caused this. We do have a lot of bunnies and uh, mice out here. So I'm hoping once I get under the truck, I want to look underneath, check the wiring that's exposed, make sure nothing's chewed up. Um, I did get under uh, under the hood and I looked at some of the wiring up here and it doesn't look to be any of them you know any of the harnesses damaged or chewed up that purge valve is let's see I don't think you're gonna see it from there let me get up on this little rack right here put a little bit of light in here so you can see but on my truck that purge valve is right and it's gonna be kind of hard to see because of the that plug right there but it's underneath that plug right underneath that plug there let's see if we can get a better view that's it right there and it goes right into the intake right into the right after the throttle body so it's got two connections this hose right here I can't show you guys with my finger point at it but you see the hose right there connector and then there's a plug underneath that um yeah see i don't want the light to blind the camera but i'm gonna try to see if i can adjust it just enough so you guys can see well you might be able to see a little bit right there but 
this is the actual solenoid, the purge solenoid. This is the hose, the vacuum hose, vent hose, whatever. And then the plug is down there. So you get a basic idea what I'm what I'm talking about. So I did check out the wiring under there, under there, um, under the hood. The wiring looks decent. Um, I'm gonna do a better inspection now that I got my flashlight out here. I want to disconnect the battery. Always disconnect the ground. Do that right quick, and then we'll go underneath the truck and uh, see what we can find under there. Because I haven't got under this thing yet to look for the actual parts to see where they're at. So we're both going to learn today. The ground is disconnected. Okay, let me get my creeper. Still haven't cleaned up the shop. Getting ready to get this V6 going. We got all the, the pistons are all cleaned up. We cleaned up all the surfaces where all the um, the heads, the gaskets are gonna go. Um, I'm gonna go over it one more time. We took the oil pan off, we took the water pump off, took the timing chain cover off, and we're gonna get into that. My son's gonna get out here in a little, bo a little bit and um, do some more cleaning on it. Then we're gonna tape it all up. In the exposed areas, we're just gonna hit with the wire wheel real quick and we're gonna paint it, but that'll be a different video. This is gonna be on my truck. So, let's see, my fat tail can fit under here. Uh, you know what, let me get the flashlight. Just in case we need some light down there. I do have a shop light I can use that I actually need to plug up and put down there. But, let's see what we can find. And like I said, I haven't gotten, oh, here we go, okay. So this is the actual canister. Oh, you can see pretty decently. So, all these connections look pretty decent. I don't see anything frayed or coming apart. This is where that purge valve connects to, or not the purge valve, but the vent control solenoid. That's the main one that they say needs to re be replaced under here. Um, not sure what that is. That don't even go in it, go to anything. There's no wires coming out of there. So, uh, also for the fuel pump control module, that's right here. Right on the back side of the fuel tank, right above, right above the exhaust right in front of the, the rear rear axle. Um, that's it right there. So we'll probably check and change that as well. Um, man, all my wires look super clean under this truck. I don't see anything chewed up. I don't see anything damaged. Doesn't look nasty and dirty and muddy. So I'm not sure exactly what what the cause is of this going out but let's see if we can uh, get this thing taken apart I want to at least change this part first it's the easiest one to get to it's the main one that the whole um, that's what the code reader calls for to be changed so let's see if we can get that uh, taken apart and I'll cut you guys back on here in a little bit all right y'all we're back okay we got the old part out this is the old one it took I had to get this little pick in order to get the connector loose which is right here it's got this little lock on it what I had to do was push it through from this side and push out 
push up like this in order to get that lock undone. And then you pull that all the way out. Oh, focus camera. I already snapped it back in, but it comes all the way out. And then you push this tab in right here. And that's what unlocks your, your pigtail. Also, there's a 13 millimeter bolt that holds the bracket in up there. It holds it in just like this. This side right here connects into the EVAP box, the canister itself. And then this is the side that connects into the hose. Then it bolts into the frame right here with the 13 millimeter bolt. The harness for the plug snaps in right here, so you gotta undo that in order to get this piece off. So on the connectors, you see this little piece right here? That just pushes in. I don't know if you can see inside there. You push that in and that unlocks the little locking mechanism on that hose. Let me see if I can get up and show you a little bit better. Okay, you can see the little tabs right here. That's where it locks in place. Now when I push on that piece in the back, You can see how they move, how they open up. Yep, right there. Okay, camera focus better. See how they open up? That's the ring right inside. That's your lock. See how that opens up? Boom, that's all you gotta do. Push that just like that, and then pull it off. So, that's the old one. We got the new one right there. We're gonna go ahead and get this mounted up plugged in and then go under the engine compartment and uh, get that purge valve uh, swapped out so let me go ahead and cut this camera off and uh, get this mounted up and uh, cut you back on here in a minute all right YouTube we're back now we're under the hood and to make it more accessible to get to the solenoid, this is it right here. I ended up taking this, I don't know, breather, cover off, snorkel box, whatever it's called. This, I just took this loose with a flathead screwdriver. Connects right there to the air box where the air filter's at. Then there's another one down here, uh, right there in the back of the box that connects to the, um, Man, I just had that valve body, or uh, throttle body. There you go. Then there's this little bracket right here. Right on top of the alternator, there, there's a little tab on the other side, a little nipple on the other opposite side of this. It snaps right in to this. And that's what stabilizes it. So you just have to pop that off, and the whole thing comes off. So let's get this out the way. We'll just set it right here with my other junk for now, out of the way. All my lawnmowers and tables, bar tables, all that stuff's become shelves and places for crap. So, all right. So this is what we got. Now, in order to get this off, I'll use a 10 millimeter socket right here on this bolt right at the bottom. We'll take this vacuum line off and then the pigtail the plug is right here in the back. So I don't know if I can do that one handed but let's try. Might be able to see without that light. So let's get this set up. Sorry y'all. Not sure if I'll need a an extension on there or not, but let's try it without it first. Let's see, 
we'll be able to get to it. Yeah. So we'll be able to get to it to take it off, but I want to take this hose off first. That way I don't risk breaking it, damaging it. Should have the same thing, this little clip. Should be the part that holds it on. But that I'm not exactly sure how to take it off. I don't think it squeezes. <clears throat> Let me see. Let me try and get that off and then we'll cut you back on. Alright YouTube, I couldn't do it with one hand. I had to do it with two. So, sorry about that. But, as you can see, we got her off. Let's turn this light off, see if that'll let you see a little bit better. So she's off. That's where it was right here. What I ended up having to do was you push this little tab in right here, push that in, and as you're pushing it in, wiggle this around just a little bit. You don't want to break this line, it's plastic. And then pop that off, move that out the way. As far as the pigtail, the plug, there's this little lock right here, this white little lock. You push that up and out the way, and then there's a tab inside here. If you can see it right there, that little flap, you gotta lift that up with the pin and then pull the plug out. But I had to do that. I had to take this off in order to be able to access that plug because it was in the back. It was hard to get to. I couldn't get to it with it mounted on the, on the block. So I ended up taking it off, turned it around and I was able to get to the plug. So let's go ahead and get the new one installed. Oh, that was the new one. Okay, this is the old one. That's the new one. Let's get the new one installed. Lube it up a little bit. That way she goes in, slides in pretty good. I think we'll go ahead and, man, I can't do this one hand, it's kind of hard, let's try. Let's give it a try, I ain't gonna say I can't. I hate saying I can't. Okay, so, let's see if we can get this bad boy connected. Oops, sorry y'all. Okay, you heard the click. Okay, she's on. Now, push that little lock. Get that back in place. I think she's on all the way. I believe she's on all the way. I can't get it off. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Looks like there's some wires. It's seeing this little hole right here. Let me open this up and check these wires out right quick before I go through putting it all, the, all this stuff back together. Let me check them wires real quick, make sure they're all right. All right, we got her. A lot, the wires were okay. It was just a little that uh, wire loom that looked like it was a little bit cracked or chewed up but the, the wires underneath were fine so let me get my socket back out ten millimeter get it put back on the ratchet Ugh. Go ahead and tighten her down. She don't have to be God Almighty tight. All you want to do is just get her snug. Actually, let's do it like this, at least to get her started.
that way we ain't got no issues with cross threading. I can't believe this would happen so fast on this truck. <clears throat> All I do is take her back and forth to work. Clean her up as best I can. Oil changes on time. Okay, she's snug. She's on there now. We'll go ahead and connect the little plastic holes. That should just snap on. Yep. Good to go. She locks in place. Oops, sorry y'all. Okay, good to go. That's installed. So now, we'll go ahead and go in reverse. Put this box back in place clean up the tools and what I'm going to do is put the battery back on we're going to go ahead and start it run it and what I noticed before was after I cleared that code it would come right back on right away it didn't it did I didn't have to drive it you know 20 30 miles um she came right back on as soon as I started the truck up so if this fixes it it shouldn't come back on right away but we'll see what happens um let's go ahead and get this put back together get the battery hooked back up and then um we'll cut you back on here in a few minutes all right youtube we're back we got her all installed back in place everything's connected so let's get this battery connected Get her tightened down. And then cross our fingers and like I said, we're doing this in real time. I've never done this before. This is my first time ever even working on my truck. The only thing I ever did to this truck was install some rock lights on it when I first got it put some wheels on it and took it in and got an uh, alarm system put on it that was it changed my own oil I changed my own oil every time I just don't trust uh, dealerships so what do I do with my keys uh oh I leave them in here What I do with the keys, buddy? Ah, uh, did I take them back in the house? I think I did. So here goes the SS keys. Oh no, under all my junk papers. I was looking for my receipts for some parts that I had warrantied out at uh, O'Reilly's already but that's why all the, everything was buried so let's fire her up check engine light gone but that could be because I disconnected the battery um, let's see how much fuel I got. Oh, sorry. Covering up the camera. I got about three quarters of a tank. A little under three quarters. Check engine light is gone. But like I said, I did disconnect the battery for a little while. So that may have uh, taken it off out of the computer for a minute but from what I've been reading it was stating that um, it is a hard code 
meaning that it stays permanent in the computer system until the parts are swapped out and the computer doesn't sense that problem anymore then she'll go ahead and uh, take it out the system so even though I disconnected my battery it could still be locked in the in the in the computer and if I was to take this thing to get the uh, inspection done on it it would still fail because like I said it's locked in that brain so we'll go ahead and drive it a couple days back and forth to work see what happens and then uh, give you an update if there's an update because the light came back on then maybe I'll make another video on doing that uh, the fuel pump um, control module but I think for now we'll just go ahead and leave it un undone I'll, I probably won't change that out yet um, it's it's very easy to do but I wanted to see if these two parts would fix the problem first and so far she looks like she's alright so guys uh, I know this is, isn't the Monte Carlo related or the SS related but I just wanted to see what would happen if we can get this truck going. Um, like I say, man, she's my she's my baby. This is what I drive back and forth to work every day, unless I feel like bringing out the uh, the SS. Um, but I might have to go get my wheels, put my wheels on her now. But all right, everybody, go ahead and hit that notification bell, man. That way you guys know every time I drop a new video like comment subscribe hit me up man if you have any questions um i'll try to help as best i can thank you guys peace I'ma soon forget So far between the lines I'ma write a new set A new beginning Reflecting on the times That were that hard I've fallen down many times But I got mad hard uh.